The sidechain compression technique is a music production staple. Stick a compressor over a sustained channel, or even on a group containing all your other channels, and feed it with a sidechain signal from the kick channel to make things pump with the beat of your track. Easy. But in this tutorial, we're going to get a bit nerdier with sidechain compression technique, explaining some more advanced concepts and taking you deeper into a world where your compressor's controls work in strange new ways. First of all, you don't just need to use your track's existing kick to trigger the sidechain pumping effect. You might want to do it using a completely different signal. For instance, if you duplicate the kick channel, you can send that signal to the compressor's sidechain input instead. If your DAW lets you choose between pre-fade and post-fade sends for sidechaining, sending it pre-fade means that we can turn the fader down, removing this new trigger signal from the actual mix, but still sending it to the compressor. So why do it this way? This method means you can use any ghost signal to trigger sidechain compression and program it separately from your actual kick track. Maybe you need to drop out the kick but keep the pump, or change the kick signal without changing your finely tuned trigger signal. Now, for instance, we can program any kind of kick pattern in battery while keeping the same sidechain rhythm. Whatever you use to trigger it, here's our compressor, Solid Dynamics, responding to its sidechain signal. So how do the normal compression controls work now, in detail? In this context, the compressor works upside down in a way. First of all, one of the most important parameters for the character of the pumping effect is actually the release time. A short release will make the pump very quick. Here's how it sounds with the quickest possible release time. As we raise the release control in Solid Dynamics, listen to what happens. As we increase the release, it's the length of the pump that gets longer, as the signal returns to normal more slowly. The idea here is to tune the release time so that the sidechain effect's rhythm fits in with your track. Actually, it's often best to do that in context, with all the other elements added back into the mix. Here, the pumping sound feels like it's more in time with the kick drum signal coming back up to breathe on the offbeat. Compare this to how it was with a minimal release time. Finding the right release time plays a big role in the feel of the sidechain pumping effect. Usually, a compressor's threshold has to be tuned to the right level for the signal in question. But since the signal in question here is an instantaneous trigger track, and it's the same with every hit, the threshold starts to matter a lot less. Instead, the threshold and ratio both act together to determine the depth of the sidechain pump. The threshold acts a bit like a maximum reduction control while the ratio determines how deep the reduction actually goes within that maximum range. With a high threshold, the ratio doesn't have much effect on the pump. And when we set the threshold very low, the ratio can determine whether we have a little or a lot of pumping.
So what about the attack control? This can be set relatively short. The quicker the attack, the more immediate the pump will be, although you might not even notice the difference depending on what else is going on in the project. In theory, a quicker attack time should also enable the actual kick signal to be heard in the mix a little better. If you listen to the duct sound in isolation, the attack might be so fast that it makes a clicking sound of its own, like is happening here in Supercharger GT. This clicking might be masked by the kick itself, or you can usually get rid of it by raising the attack time again. However, if the attack is too slow, the pump will also take longer to kick in. This isn't necessarily usual, but if it happens to sound good, by all means do it. How about the knee control? This shouldn't really make any difference as long as your sidechain signal doesn't change in level. Although switching between a hard and a soft knee does change how things work. As long as the compressor is fed with the same sound every beat, the knee will just act like it's slightly adapting the threshold or even have no effect at all. The mix control, because the compressor is placed over the track being pumped, will work as usual, blending between the original and the gain reduced signal. This will only really reduce the amount of pumping that goes on. But doing it this way can be a useful method for making the effect more subtle without touching those important controls. 